Uh, a little musical welcome to my night of New Orleans music and that's an iconic piano piece written by a musician down there named Earl King around 1960 and made famous by Professor Longhair who was a real fantastic New Orleans piano player and he first recorded it in the mid 60s and then Dr. John played it and just about everybody has played this and uh, I, I've played quite a few times down in New Orleans even played in Tipitina's one time um, with the Flectones, gee, in the early 90s. And I made sure to play Big Chief at one point during the evening, and I think uh, some people down there appreciated it. So New Orleans is, a, is a, one of the most amazing musical cities in the world. And it's a part of America, but it's very much its own place and very different from much of America in the sense that it wasn't always, a, it wasn't ever a British colony the way that all the other uh, original 13 states started out. Louisiana was, uh, was around for a long time as a French and then a Spanish uh, possession. Uh, so 
things really developed differently down there. And one of the things that happened was the music developed differently because there was just much more of a pervasive African influence that carried on and survived uh, through those periods. Uh, and there, there's even a place in New Orleans called Congo Square where the, uh, the freed slaves would, would sit and play uh, African rhythms on drums. Uh, and, and this has all been passed down. New Orleans has this amazing musical heritage of, of brass bands and, and uh, incredible pianists, amazing trumpet players, incredible composers. Uh, it's just one of those places that if you're an American and if you're a jazz musician, you got to go there and just soak it in. So one of the most famous tunes ever written about New Orleans actually pronounces the title, <laughs> pronounces the name of the city wrong. Uh, do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? And nobody who lives there ever says New Orleans. Uh, but some guys uh, who lived in New York thought that it was a good rhyme. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? And their names were Eddie DeLang and Louis Alter. They were great movie composers. And they wrote this beautiful tune for a movie called New Orleans, New, or <laughs> New Orleans, that came out in 1947. And I just looked it up and I found out that Billie Holiday sang the song in the original and Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong, played the trumpet on it with his band. So I'm going to do my version of it on the uh, Mississippi saxophone here, the, the harmonica, and I'll do the best I can with it.
Okay. Well, thanks very much. And uh, at this point, I would like to uh, actually welcome everybody to the show. I just felt like playing a little bit more. And so now, I would like to welcome everyone back to the Thursday Night Happening. And uh, the reason why we're doing this is to keep music alive and also to raise money for a really great cause. The Chicago, Greater Chicago Food Depository, they feed the hungry. And they've been doing it for years, and especially in this time because, you know, things are, are horrible. Uh, <laughs> let's just face it. Uh, the economy is just uh, is in is in the dumps because uh, many people just can't go to work, including musicians. I mean, we have no place to play. So I'm just trying to do the best I can, and and raise as much money as possible to feed the hungry in Chicago. So the all the information about where to donate is going to be on the screen, and uh, there it is, Chicago Food Depository. And so uh, I'd like to thank everybody who donated last time. Your donations helped buy about 1,200 meals for hungry people. I mean, this is a really great organization. They're incredibly efficient, uh, and they have a, a very devoted and dedicated staff of volunteers who bring the food from this huge warehouse to all over Chicago to distribute it to the, to the hungry and needy. So thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to uh, also at this time mention a very special uh, thing that we've done uh, recently, put out a new album. Now, I've been told that they're called albums again, which I had no idea. So here it is. It is called Howard and Jethro. And the reason it's called Howard and Jethro is that it featured, uh, it, it's a concert, a live concert recording from 1983 of the great mandolinist Jethro Burns, who I had the great good fortune of playing with and knowing very well in the late 70s into the mid 80s when he passed. And we played a wonderful concert together that somebody recorded and I found the cassette in my attic. And here's a picture of the original cassette. It's on the back of the CD, which uh, sounded really, really good. And so I digitally remastered it and we put it out on CD and also it's available for download. So if you want to hear something really fantastic, Jethro was hilariously funny too. The reason that's called Howard and Jethro is that he was part of a country comedy team called Homer and Jethro. Uh, they were brilliant, as brilliant as, at comedy as they were at music. Um, Jethro's main inspiration on mandolin was Django Reinhardt. So um, for all the, those of you who don't know about him, he's a, a mandolin icon and uh, I just felt compelled to put this out because it sounds really good. So, moving along to the rest of the music. You know, uh, New Orleans, as I said, is the, a home of many great composers, musicians, and p especially piano players. There's a long line of them, and some of them got real famous as pop stars, like uh, uh, Fats Domino, for example. And then there was, of course, uh, uh, Henry Butler, fantastic pianist who passed away a few years ago. But the first, and I think the greatest of the P New Orleans piano players was the great Jelly Roll Morton. And he was uh, very active from the very early 20th century until the 1940s when he passed. And uh, he also was like a living history of jazz. Um, you should listen to his Library of Congress recordings. They're unbelievable. And I'm going to play one of his older tunes. It's really like a ragtime number, and it's called Grandpa's Spells. And what it's about is an old man trying to keep up with the dancers and getting dizzy and kind of spinning out of control. Uh, and I'm going to try to have some fun with this one. So Jelly Roll Morton, Grandpa's Spells. <laughs> Thank you. 
Grandpa Spells. Okay. Jelly Roll Morton. Yes. And if you listen to him, he would tell you that he invented jazz. Uh, and a lot of people thought he was a braggart, but I don't know. It might be true. Uh, just a unbelievable musician and uh, an incredible storyteller, great singer, everything. So, you know, I mean, New Orleans is not just a place for music from the past. It has a very, very vital contemporary music scene, all different styles, uh, R&B and, and gospel and folk and jazz and, you know, really modern jazz as well. Uh, and of course, everybody knows about the Marsalis family, the, uh, the great Ellis Marsalis, uh, who was a teacher, a very important teacher in New Orleans, a pianist. And his four sons, Winton, Branford, Del Fayo, and Jason, who are all you know, incredible musicians. But there are so many more, and, and such a, a diversity and variety of, of music that goes on in that city every single day and night. And especially a street called Frenchman Street, because uh, that's a place where uh, there's a great jazz club called Snug Harbor. Uh, it's always had very uh, modern music. Uh, it's not. It wasn't for tourists. It was a jazz. It's a jazz club run by Jason Patterson, and I've had the great good fortune of playing there several times with some of my friends from Astral Project, James Singleton and Johnny Vidakovich, and you know several others. Uh, and uh, I miss it. I mean, I, as soon as this pandemic's over, I'm going to get back down to New Orleans and uh, soak in the feeling. So uh, the other day I was thinking about it and I wrote a tune that I tried to embody some of the modern spirit of Frenchman Street. And I'm gonna try to play it for you right now. It's called the Frenchman Street Promenade. And it's, a, it's kind of a rambling little thing in seven. It just came to me.
right. Frenchman Street Promenade, dedicated to all my modern jazz musician friends down in New Orleans and to people from all over the world. Speaking of which, there are some people joining us from all over the world, and I'd like to say hi to some of them. Hey, Buzz, great harmonica player, great harmonica force, and, and Geraldo and Roberta. Oh, hey, Chris, my former webmaster, wonderful person, great author. Andrew, yeah, Wally, who turned me on to Evan Christopher's uh, stuff. Oh, Mariana, hello, hello, hello. Hey, Gordon, from Hong Kong, nice to see you. Hey, Stephen. Great bassist from California. And, uh, oh, Tony Schmecker. Yeah, look, the good times roll. Let's say les bons temps roulés. Uh, yes, it is one of the best food cities, Greg. Absolutely. It, it brought good food to America, you know. Uh, and now I know what it means to miss New Orleans. New Orleans. Thank you, Jonathan. Yes. Oh, hey, Mad Cat. Oh, thanks so much, my brother. Yes, Jason. Great mandolin, uh, great harmonica player. David Bird. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, so many people. Ed St. Peter. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> nice to see you. Hey, Jimmy. Ah, oh, have a cigar. All right, bro. Ah, Rob Pepperozzi. Oh, so many good friends. Harmonica friends and, and you know, musical friends from all over the world. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Vladimir, I'm not sure who you are. I might have met you in Russia. It's entirely possible. Lewis Hunt. Oh, hey, Lewis. Oh, wow. What's the name? Hey, Peter. Cafe Express, may it live forever in our memories. Eric Fisher, Dale Spaulding, hey man, oh, so nice to see you. You know, I'm playing for an imaginary audience. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a little intimidating sometimes to play for everyone and no one at the same time, you know? All right, so I do believe it's time for the last tune of the evening. I'm, I'm just so happy to, to see you, uh, really happy to see all of you here, and uh, once again, remember, we're doing this for a really good cause. And all the money goes to the Greater Chicago Food Depository. So my last tune that I'm going to play for you is something special. I've been, I've been hiding this part of myself because uh, many people don't know that I'm a singer. And sometimes I don't know if I'm a singer. <laughs> but I have written a number of songs with lyrics. And uh, for this one, my role model is Jelly Roll Morton. And I just recently recorded this on piano and vocal, and we made a lyrics video for it that you can download at levyland.com. And this tune, it's a story. I'm gonna tell you the story. It's about a legendary jazz musician from New Orleans. The reason why he's legendary is that he never recorded. Now jazz, unlike classical music, you know, there is all sorts of classical music figures from the past and they wrote down what they played. They had to, that was the only way the music could be transmitted is black ink on white paper. But jazz, is a different kind of thing. It's a, it's a sketch, it's a form designed for soloing. So Buddy Bolden, he never wrote down any of his solos, you know, he just played. He was the king of trumpet in New Orleans right around the turn of the century into the 1900s. They called him King Bolden and apparently he was the most powerful trumpet player in New Orleans that anyone had ever heard. Jelly Roll Morton said that you could hear him from miles away. And I, I believe him, you know, there was a quieter world back then. And that swampy air, it's thick. And the sound carries down there. And so he used to stand in this park in New Orleans and turn his horn to the city and play. He called it, Calling My Children Home. And everybody loved him. He would sometimes book two or three gigs in a night, and run back and forth between one place and the other, jumping up on stage to play solos. But you know, there's a lot of pressure when you're the king. Because everybody's trying to take your crown. So Buddy, 
he started drinking more and more and more and eventually it drove him crazy. He became a danger to himself. He stopped showing up at his jobs. He became unreliable. People wondered what had happened to him. And finally, he was committed to an asylum for the insane in Jackson, Louisiana, where he lived out the last 20 years of his life, playing trumpet to the air, dressed in those white inmates' robes. Nobody ever came to visit him. He faded from the memory of musicians and people as new people took over. That's why he's a legendary figure. So years ago, I found out about this man, read a book about him, and wrote a song 25 years ago with just a few lyrics. And later, I finished it. But I'm not going to sing it for you tonight. I'm just going to play it. And if you want to hear the words, you're going to have to fork over that huge amount of cash to get the lyrics video. I'm very proud of it, really. But I'm not ready to sing on Thursday night happening yet. So you're just going to have to listen to me play and imagine this man and his story. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this evening and I uh, hope that you find it uh, generosity in your hearts to donate to the Greater Chicago Food Depository. And I also hope that you uh, 
are all staying safe and well, especially my friends in Northern California who are going through, again, another terrible bunch of of terrible uh, fires that are threatening to burn down entire entire counties. I I just really am praying that you get some rain and that it starts to cool down a little bit out there. Uh, Special special shout out to you, especially my friends at Artist Works in Napa. So uh, once again, thank you, and I hope that you come back and join us next week. I'm going to be doing improvisation on classical music, something totally different. Every week is totally different, and uh, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for watching. Take care and be well.